morning, um, well, there are a couple of things that I heard that resonate so deeply. One, Melinda, you were talking about the weariness that is felt. There, That is just so pervasive. Everyone is so weary and we're all kind of at the end of our bandwidth. It gets a little tricky. And then, um, goodness, I, I just wanted to recognize that and say that. And as we lean into that reality around us, um, we'll let the Holy Spirit speak through Ephesians to us. Um, this is a quite profound connection with what this scripture is inviting us to experience and know of life with Christ. We have been, I just wanted to remind us of the words that we've been given already um, and what it means to be in communion with our triune God, Father, Son, Spirit, Creator, Sustainer, Savior, that we are included in Christ. We get to be a part of that communion. We are chosen. Oh, what a gift that is to be chosen. And we are seated with Christ. We have a place. We're heard. We're seen. We're known. Today, the invitation to us is to see how we will be strengthened by Christ. Um, out of curiosity, how many of you are following along with the book, Included in Christ? If you would raise your hand. Great. That gives me a good choice. I'm going to share a couple things from it this morning. Um, she does such a beautiful job of um, sharing so vulnerably of her life, but also so just honest, vulnerable, true, um, that I think is really good. So it'd still be worth it if you wanted to snag that book on Amazon or so, or wherever you find your, your books. As we dive in, I want to tell you, we're going to do this in kind of three movements. And the first one, I'm going to invite us to do kind of an immersive experience, kind of a contemplative way of looking at this scripture passage. And then I'm going to pull us into a little bit of um, mining some of the details of it and sort of a mind work, study work. And then pop us back into a little bit of a reflective personal time. Um, so roll with me in that. And in that invitation, it, in that, I want to invite you, if you have um, a piece of paper or a journal nearby, you may want that. Um, many of you, I know you're makers, you're creators. So there might be some sort of handwork that you do. And I invite you to pick it up and do it. If that is something, sometimes doing those things helps us even immerse in more deeply when we hear scripture, when we are with the Holy Spirit within an attentive and aware way. And I want you to let your creative mind, that one that is given to us by God, to let the imagination flow of how you feel and see this. This scripture passage is one that is so beautiful and it transcends um, Paul is inviting us into, the author of Ephesians is inviting us into kind of a grand view of things. And there is nothing that helps us get a grand view of things than artistry, creative work. So that's my invitation to you. And so the first immersive thing, and here this will give you time to go grab something if you need it and you can still hear. This is me as a friend sharing a favorite song with you. And um Karen, would you just send me a message if it doesn't come through? I'm hoping it will come well through my speaker. Um, and I'm going to share with you the um, lyrics to this, because essentially that's what I want you to get. But boy, isn't it doubly meaningful if you can hear it. This is called Ears Cry, and it is sung by Rita Connolly and with Sean Davey. And it is part of the, did I hit send? There it is, um, the St. Patrick's Prayer. But check out that first line. I arise today in the strength of heaven. So I'm going to play this for you. And you let me know if you can't hear it or it needs to be louder or whatnot. Every heartless blessing, every pure prayer, Susan, it just cut out. Is it back? 
It's coming back now, yeah. Just cut out again. I think I think not gonna I go. I can't, it, it might need other noise going. Okay. Through, um. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Look that up on YouTube if you can. So I've given you the name there. It is just beautiful, and it can. Um, I'm gonna share with you these lyrics and. Um, I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of sun, radiance of moon, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depth of the sea, stability of earth. Firmness of rock, I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's eye to look before me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me from all who shall wish me ill, afar and anear, alone and in a multitude, against every cruel, merciless power that may oppose my body and soul, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ to shield me, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, I arise today. Beloved Lord, as we lean into this scripture, would you help us experience your surrounding love and presence that strengthens us? We are looking and listening for you, each having come carrying our lives that are full, heavy, some experiencing some deep challenge. Would you hold us fast? Pour in your Holy Spirit where we need to be strengthened. We pray this in the power of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. For a while, that song became a daily morning practice. When I felt a deep need for strength, and that may be a season we are all in again. With that frame, I invite you to hear the, um, oh, thank you, Karen, for that YouTube link, um, to hear the words of scripture. And here's where you get, if you've got your paper or your craft, your mind, and let it be, what do you sense? What do you see? What do you hear? What rings for you as I read the scripture from Ephesians? For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
We'll let those words linger for a moment. I invite you to hear it one more time. What rings, what sparkles, what stands out so clearly? For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Were there images that came to mind? Maybe draw a little scribble of them, what that looked like. Is there a word that just rang out for you? Were there any scriptures that you felt you heard on top of that within it? I have to tell you, I have found one in there, and tell me if this does not sound familiar. Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord. You know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Does anything get added to your image, to the words that ring for you when you, send, when you hear those scriptures? We are immersed in the presence of God, no matter where we are. We are immersed in the presence of God, no matter where we are. The author of our study guide book did such a beautiful job of sharing her story. I love how she pulls out, here is my shadow narrative, but here is a savior narrative. For us in the words that we've been going in this week that we've been reflecting on, but today for strength and our shadow narrative, her strategy, shadow narrative is, I don't have enough. I am too weak. I'm alone. And here, the savior narrative is, oh, you are immersed in the full presence of Christ who is strengthening you no matter where you are.
where are you? And this is for you to make a note on your paper to think about. And I also want to acknowledge and honor that this, this study guide, wow, it can cut right to the heart and get to really vulnerable places. And so we're tender with one another in that. And you don't have to share our small group questions even as I'm sharing them. And they're from the book, from her work, which is so good. Um, we know we want places of, um, well, we want wise places to share things and that you get control of that. So you're welcome to engage with the questions at your comfort level. Um, but in your inner being, would you go deeply in with Christ? Because Christ is with you. strategy of today is to offer some space. I don't know how you feel when silence comes into your space. Sometimes if I'm not ready for it, all I desperately want is for it to be filled. Wait, did they forget what they're saying? Do they not know where they are in their notes? What's happening? We're letting the silence be able to help us see where we are. If we feel that anxiety, if we feel like we need to fill it, whatever might be empty, pause and ask, Lord, how would you fill this? What are you asking me to see? What are you inviting me to know? How do I see where you are? So, Lord, we're thankful that you speak to us. If there are any other last little notes you want to make on your paper, and I also recognize that I'm giving you painfully small amounts of silence. So now I'm going to invite your mind to come out of maybe some of those more um, where you are and into more of a steady thinking. Let's look at this passage and pull it apart a little bit. If there's one thing that this passage is doing for us, it is setting a huge frame, the expanse of God, like we have mentioned. You noticed right off or maybe you didn't, it starts out with for this reason. So it's always helpful to know, well, for what reason? I'll get to that in a moment. Could you tell this is a prayer, right? And on your handout, if you have that and with the small group questions and, and the passages right there, it is a prayer. And so this letter to the Ephesians, the whole first part of it, and here's a good thing to do when you're studying something, and it won't take too long, but you can take the book of Ephesians and read it through in one sitting. There is something really helpful about getting the whole sweep of a letter when we have kind of trained ourselves to read scripture in little bits. And I could only be talking for myself then. You may already do that. But um, see if you can read the letter to Ephesians in one shot. And so you can get the feel of it. But as you read that, you're going to see the first few chapters right till we get up to this point. They are Paul exclaiming about the grace and the goodness of God. So here he is. He has been explaining this in the verses right before um, this passage starts. So we know that what for this reason is, I'm going to pull just a couple of verses before it so you can get the frame. Paul will say, I became a servant of this gospel. And the gospel, the good news, you always have to keep going back. <laughs> you always have to keep going back. 
The gospel is the good news that the Gentiles, everyone who you thought was out, is also in. They are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. The gift of God's grace through the working of his power. Although I'm less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, for which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my suffering for you, which are for your glory. Here, Paul is saying he has been given this amazing um mission, this amazing life to share the grand riches of Christ for all, for Israelite, for Gentile, that there is a God who is reconciling all people, bringing them together and bringing them to God. These first three chapters have been expounding on that good, rich grace of God. And then there's this tiny sentence, which speaks volumes. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings. I ask you not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory, which are for your glory. Or your glory. <laughs> that little line tells us volumes about the context. Paul is writing from prison cells. Paul has encountered some deep hardship along the way. And by the time that early believers are reading this letter, they have been watching all of these people who have been proclaiming the goodness and the grace of God be martyred and die. Their context we have heard, we know about the good, great glory of God. We have caught this amazing enthusiasm and the brilliance of it. And they are hanging on in house churches and listening for this. But they are watching their leaders go through incredible hardship. So what Paul does then is he will turn to say, for this reason, all of that grace, and I kind of see an image of all of that grace, this expanse of even cos cosmos big being funneled into, but wait, my current context has one of deep suffering that has narrowed my life, our life so tightly. Paul will say that's for your glory. This is one of the most helpful things I have ever heard someone say about the word glory in scripture. When you encounter it, thinking, what does that mean? Glory, glory. Think God's goodness made evident. That God's goodness will be made evident. Okay, so you've got this tiny place. And so in that tiny place, so I see this big expanse going into this tiny place. And then we have this prayer. It's a prayer and a doxology. So it's a prayer. And then you can distinctly hear at the end, the doxology, which is a praise to God saying how good God is. Uh, that says now in him who da da da. So this prayer in Ephesians at this point, grace, that one little line saying the context, we have this prayer, which is a hinge. Here's a hinge point of saying, how are we going to get from this grandness to what this current experience is so that you will be strengthened to know, hold on, hang on to, know that you are immersed in that goodness and grace that prayer is going to be the hinge. And then the next few chapters of Ephesians are going to be, how do we live life together? I think that's key for us. When we have something so grand that we're like, no, we can, we see it. Well, kind of Lord, but does it match up with actually what's real right now? 
Can we remind ourselves how much time we've said we've been weary? This is really difficult. Nobody, nobody needs to know that people, like when church is so disrupted, our way of doing it, our way of gathering, and pick it, anything that we've been involved in over the last couple of years, as it has been so disruptive and broken up, they were going, wait, what was that about? Is it real? How do I see it? How am I going to live? Now, the people that Paul's writing to might have deep reason to feel weak alone, afraid. Deep reason to have that narrative, shadow narrative, which actually seems like that has got to be the real narrative, right? No, the savior narrative is that we are be, being strengthened in our inner being. We are, <laughs> we are growing so much in this. One more image for you that I'd like to give. Um, I know I've shared it before here and it actually led to one of the most joyful things in, in life over the past couple of years. I shared my love of birds. <laughs> and um, anyways, that's a whole nother story, but I've shared my love for birds. So I get on my feed of Instagram or whatever, the Cornell um, bird ornithology every year, not, you know what it is. Did you see them have that? They have a cam where you can watch. They, um, oh, now it's going to go out of my mind. The condors, they're preserving them. And so the eggs, and so you could, there's a cam, you can watch the little ones hatch out of that. It's such a, it's such a clear image that if we were to remove off all the obstacles, the difficulty of life for that little chick getting out of that egg, you would kill it, right? It needs, and I want to be so careful with this. And so let's be really careful with this. It needs that challenge to grow. It needs a good eustress, right? Eustress is a good kind of stress that will actually help you grow. It's kind of like what we're experiencing when we've been sitting at home for too dang long and we've lost track of time and we've lost all of that. There isn't enough of the good challenge variety difference to help us grow. It's why we're actually literally seeing people not, either um, not develop in some growth that we would see like young ones maybe like oh boy we're going to redo kindergarten right or oh mercy how painful this is because we saw our parents and our grandparents decline quickly because there is not that good eustress so i want to be careful because suffering i'm not saying suffering is good for suffering's sake but there is the opportunity of growth in it so the egg and the bird is God's good design of how little things grow. Like we need to do weight training, run, do things that help our bodies grow. Suffering and what Paul is experiencing, he says it is for your glory. He has got an image in his mind of the grand expanse of God's love and of God's grace and that it is available anywhere and that it is bringing things to a grand culmination of God's goodness everywhere. Um, we walk through suffering and I know you all, it, it can be hard when we don't have, we're not in the same room and I can go, do you see what I'm saying? You know what I mean? And I, I can kind of see your heads nodding because what I don't want you to hear ever, and I think I probably say this every time I talk about suffering, it isn't that suffering is good. You should go look for it. It's that when it comes, know that it is held in the hands of God and it does not control you, but God moves through you, strengthening your inner being. This is what our questions will get like. Because can you think of a time when you have gone through something really, really difficult and then you realized how much it grew you, strengthened you? It became your way of offering something to the world, to others. You saw God's grace in it. I um, think I've shared it in this group, but I've taught it so many different groups. You know, one of my brothers died when he was very young, 19 years old. It was a tragedy, tragic thing I would not wish on anyone. And it was also the hinge, the turning point that let me see the grace, the presence, and the goodness of God. And it has been a grace for me to be able to come then and in the way God has constructed my life to say, um, you can be alongside people in that suffering because you know it and you've seen it. You get that, you get that, right? Threading that needle. Right. 
This prayer is that hinge, that turning point that will take these moments of weakness and help us. And because really here's two ways we can go, right? We could take that moment and we can fall off and go, forget it. This is too hard. And we can also take that moment and say, I am leaning in, Lord, help. There will be a way of leaning in and saying, where I feel so empty, God, will you fill it? Where I feel so weak, will you help me be made strong? In this passage, I'm sorry, I don't know how to make that phone be quiet <laughs> without hanging up on it. Um, the I want to pull out this cosmological, because this is important, and I know I've been saying it a billion times, so I'm going to say it another one. Because it's interesting, and I want you to think of how it fits with us. Because this isn't, um, but this isn't common in our culture that we think of Greek mythology, right, as actual um, presence. That we think of, um, a, like Zeus. That oh, Zeus is actually. We think that's mythology. <laughs> okay, so in this time, they didn't. And so Zeus, you've got right all these different, we all have different ways that we see the world and the ways that we are seeing action in the world. And Paul in this will say, um, he has this great, it's a kind of a play on words that we don't, it, <laughs> he says, for this reason, I kneel before the father from whom every family that will be clan um, in heaven and on earth derives its name. What he's saying in that one sentence, and then we'll kind of repeat, and if you'll notice that as you read his letters and things, he'll talk about it, your, um, all the cosmos, mm -hmm. the different understandings of the cosmos, saying that no matter what you're thinking, God holds everything. All created things are through God. Um, and I guess I want to say that to us because we know we have many different ways of looking at things, and I'd be curious of your your thoughts on this, but one I notice that people will lean into is like kind of this manifesting things, kind of a weird how you make things happen. Um, is that familiar to anyone? Do you know that? Is that in your world? Might not be in your world at all. Um, but this kind of idea is that people will lean into there's a presence or an other in a universe and you want to manifest something, be strengthened, but it is not connected to God. What I'm saying is that we see everything connected to God. And in scripture, Paul is saying every created thing. And we see that over and over again. John 1, in him, um, he was in the, be in the beginning, um, was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. All things that have been created have been created through him. I'm hammering on that because it's that, again, expanse. The expanse of God's presence, the, um, the immersion that we are in, and inviting us to step into that world and realize we can be strengthened through it. And as I'm thinking images, and it's the difference between thinking there's a wall and I have to get through a closed door to a wall, and if I could get to the other side, this will be okay. Yes it, can, yes, it feels like that. What I want us all to feel in these moments and in this moment when we're so weary, we are in the expansive presence of God. So in this moment, no matter where I am, I can rely on that you will strengthen me. And I actually live in your world, God, versus then this one that is pressing in so tightly on me. And if you heard the um, sermon on Sunday, I'm thinking of that. This was another from Paul. He said, I'm a prisoner a prisoner for the Lord. The Roman Empire was pretty sure that Paul was a prisoner of them and he had their life. Is there anything you think might have your life or that thinks it has your life? Your life. And we are being strengthened. Okay. You've got expanse, you've got a hinge, the way that we move in prayer, that's the coming in, the leaning in. Um, I want to pull back to remembering that context that we have, that these little churches, and I'm going to share a quote from a comment um, right here. 
because it, it and it relates. <laughs> These should not take the phrases about strengthening the hearts and inner being of Christians lightly. It must have required extraordinary inner confidence to remain a faithful Christian with no external signs of the truth of our faith. We quote the passage that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. This is an extraordinary pray, prayer. Accomplish that, and you have the whole Christian life. I want to read that again. We should not take the phrases about strengthening the hearts and inner being of Christians lightly. It must have required extraordinary inner confidence to remain a faithful Christian with no external signs of the truth of our faith. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love is an extraordinary prayer. Accomplish that and you have the whole Christian life. For all of those who are reading this letter, the most magnificent place they have seen were the worship and praise of God. Now think to that doxology, which is a way of praise. Now to him who can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Can you think of, call to mind, the most um, moving time of worship you have ever had? Was it at one of maybe the grand um, Christmas concerts we've had here? I know I have felt it when I have been perhaps in a... Um, well, I'll tell you one, it was interesting being at, <laughs> I'm, I'll laugh, and if you know, you know, I was at General Assembly for the PCUSA, but there is something about being in a room of people who believe so deeply and love the Lord so deeply, hearing them all sing, worship, and praise. For the readers of Ephesians, the closest um, they got to that to seeing that in that grand way was the temple, right? And then there's this whole new moving, shaking, what on earth is happening as Christ comes and things get upended. What they now see of that temple is it's lying in ruins. They are in house churches. So that whole thing of you, while you are in this moment, being strengthened in your inner being, you are being rooted and grounded in love. And that there is the way it will grow even uh, that it can grow from us and pour out into goodness, kindness and for others, but that we will be able to hang on to the expansive view that is transcendent beyond each one of us. Um, of what God is doing in the world through the church. A more modern day example of this would be Dietrich Bonhoeffer sitting in a prison cell in Nazi Germany. Thinking of being rooted deeply in the love of God, being able to um, lean into who God had called the Christian people to be, what were they to be about, and live in that moment of suffering for something greater and being so strengthened through that. As we move into the more reflection, I'm wondering if what you've scribbled on your paper and that that we've pulled apart the scripture passage a little bit. I want to make one more point to you um, about that. Do you see how he said he kneels in prayer? Interesting note, we would think, oh, of course, you kneel in prayer. It was not common that people would kneel in prayer. When you see it in scripture, it is like in the Garden of Gethsemane. It is pleading for a life. It just gives you the fervency of the prayer. Um, an interesting note. And but actually, that's very real because we don't kneel in our right. We're and in our tradition, we don't kneel. We bow our heads, but you wouldn't fling your body on the floor 
unless you really are seeking the Lord. Um, the invitation to see the small place we may be in, yet how it's anchored in a grand one, and that the Lord is strengthening us. We are going to move to small groups, and there are questions um, for you to share, but I'd also open it up to talk about your experience of but talk about what has struck you from this morning. Those of you have who have the book, um, I particularly want to call your attention to page 115. And um, of strengthened people. And I may ask Brian to send that out for those of you who don't have it. I would love for you to see how strengthened people um, live coming out of this prayer. Um, I'll ask him to do that, but I'm conscious of our time now that we could go to small group. So unless there's any quick questions before 